Good morning, everybody. Um, for me, it's Sunday today, but for you, it's Monday. And I'm recording um, our daily assembly at home this morning. And what I'm going to do this week is I am going to segue nicely from and seamlessly from last week's theme, which was all about the things that we are thankful for and thankfulness, into this week's themes, which are all about feeling safe, feeling safe at home and feeling safe at school. And just a little vocabulary lesson for you, particularly year five and six children. The word I use there is segue. And that means to make a smooth link between one thing and another. It's also, interestingly, one of the co most commonly misspelt words in the, um, in the English language at the moment. Um, it is spelt S-E-G-U-E. -E. So a little challenge for you. See if you can get the word segue into your conversations and work this week. Perhaps you're writing an essay, linking ideas. It's a really useful word and I like to use it a lot. So we're going to segue from thankfulness into safety. And the thing that's going to link those two together for me today is pets, actually. Um, and we're going to use another story about pets to help us think about safe places. So just take a moment, first of all, in your seats to think about where do you feel the absolute safest? Think about home, first of all. Is it in the lounge with your parents watching telly? Is it in your bedroom all comfy and cosy and wrapped up warm? Perhaps it's with grandparents or aunties and uncles doing something really lovely. After the assembly, I'd really like your teachers to um, let you share your ideas of your safe spaces where you feel the safest. And then how about at school? What point in the school day do you feel the most safe? Is it, oh, perhaps it's in a lesson that you really enjoy. Perhaps it's in art where you're drawing a beautiful picture and your teachers put some music on. Perhaps it's in English and you really enjoy writing beautiful stories. Have a think about and a talk about your own safe spaces. I asked my daughter this morning, where do you feel the safest? And she said, I think hers is the same as mine, actually, um, that she feels the very safest in the living room with a blanket, all cosy and with a candle on, which is exactly what we'll be doing later on today. Um, but the girl in our story, Kate... Um, always felt her particular safe space was when she was in bed and she allowed, I don't know whether you do or not at home, she allowed her pets to come on her bed and sleep upstairs with her. And her favourite pet was a cat. And unfortunately, the cat's gone to Rainbow Bridge. The cat's died. Um, and she's feeling a little bit lonely. But it's a really joyous story. Um, and it links with our idea of safe spaces this week. And it's called Let's Get a Pup. Here we go. I'll show you the front cover. There it is. And there's a sneak preview of the pup that they're going to try to get. The end of Kate's bed was a lonely place. Tiger the cat no longer slept there. Tiger died last winter and there were only Kate's two feet to help keep each other company. Now Kate woke to full summer with the sun pouring over the back fence Let's get a pup, said Kate. What, a brand new one, said a now wide awake mum. With the wrapping still on, added her breathless dad. Pups don't come wrapped, replied Kate. I know they don't, said dad. It was just a joke. And here she is, she's decided it's time to get a new pet and she's come bounding into her parents' bedroom. I wonder if you ever do that, poor parents. They were just trying to have a, another five minutes piece. I wonder if they'll agree. Mum looked in the paper. Oh, it must be small, said Kate. And cute, said Dad. And get all excited, said Kate. And run round in circles, said Dad. Hmm, said Mum. Look. The rescue centre. The centre for dogs without a home. The centre for dogs all alone. With their breakfast uneaten, they dressed and left immediately. So they found a place in the newspaper where they can try to get a new pup from. Well, at the rescue centre, they found plenty of dogs without a home and lots of dogs all alone. They found big dogs, small dogs, sniffers and sleepers, wire heads, short hairs, scratchers and leapers. 
They found fighters and biters, growlers and snarlers, short dogs, dogs long and thin, and dogs with their cheeks sucked in. They also found happy dogs and sad dogs, take me dogs and dogs who couldn't care less. Here's some of the dogs that they see at the rescue centre, all sorts of dogs. I wonder which one they'll choose, I wonder which one you'd choose. They saw smelly dogs and fat dogs, lean and mean dogs. Chew it up and spit it out at you dogs. And dogs like walking nightmares. I think it's that one they're talking about there. Look at him, he looks a bit mean. <laughs> and then they saw, I'll show you who they saw. Then they saw Dave. <gasps> Maybe Dave is going to be the one to help Kate feel safe again when she's upstairs. Dave was so excited, he came out sideways and he barked twice. Water flew off his tongue and he turned a complete circle in the air. He was small, he was cute, he was brand new. Dave climbed right over the top of Kate, who briefly wore him like a hat. He's all that we want, said Kate. All that we came for, said Mum. We'll take him, said Dad. And then they saw, you can just see her nose there. But they've got Dave in their arms, but then they saw, who's this going to be? Is this going to be the kind of dog that they were after? Rosie. I'm just going to show you a picture of beautiful Rosie. And she's not the puppy that they were looking for, but there's something about Rosie that they really like. They saw Rosie and she saw them. She was old and grey and broad as a table. It was difficult for her to get to her feet, but she stood, it seemed, almost politely. Her eyes watered, her ears went back and she radiated good intention. Oh, my wish for you, Rosie, said Dad, is that you could lie on someone's living room floor. Or their couch, said Mum. Or on someone's bed, said Kate. Mum's voice shook. We'd take them all if we could, but what could we do? And with many a backward glance, they walked slowly away. There they are, with Dave in their arms, who they love so much already. And there's beautiful Rosie, looking a bit sad, being left behind. At home, Dave was everything that a pup could be and more. On his first night, he cried in his box. And the next morning, Kate's mum and dad received a good licking. Dave was crying last night, so he slept with me, said Kate. But I didn't sleep. Neither did I, said dad. I was wishing. Neither did I, said mum. I, I was wishing. With their breakfast once again uneaten, they dressed and left immediately. At the rescue centre... Rosie was waiting for them. Let's get you home, said Dad. Oh, look, there's Rosie. She didn't expect them to come back. But they've decided that although Dave is perfect, they couldn't leave Rosie on her own at the rescue centre. Oh, Rosie was instantly at home. Her broad, heavy tail swept everything off the low table. I've seen a dog smelling a man, but never a man smelling a dog, said Kate's mum. She needs a bath. Poor old Rosie. There she is, having to have a bath at home. I hope she settles in well. Now, Dad's wish has come true. Rosie is asleep on the living room floor with Dave to keep her company. And Mum's wish has also come true. And now Rosie and Dave are asleep on the couch. That looks a happy and safe place to be. And what of Kate's wish? Will that come true as well? Yes. Dave and Rosie will get to sleep on someone's bed. This is one of my favourite pictures. It looks so safe and so cosy up there in the bedroom. Kate puts her head on Rosie's stomach. She hears angry gurgles, squeaks and plops, lonely corkscrew sounds and the pump, pump, pump of Rosie's heart like a big hollow engine room. OK, 
Kate's feet are no longer lonely under the blankets. It seems like Dave and Rosie have always been there. Their weight is comfortable and reliable and will stop Kate's bed floating away into the night. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that story. It's one of my favourites. And that last little bit is going to lead us, it's going to help us to segue into tomorrow's assembly. When we think about the people who make us feel safe at home and at school, the people who are comfortable and the people who are reliable and help to keep us feel safe. And my wish for you today and all days is to be safe, to keep safe, both at home and at school. So have a really safe day today. Uh, I'll see you soon. Bye for now.